Hey there guys, how's it going? Over the course of this video, I'm going to be introducing to you the SV Bonnie Powerbox Pro. It's a smart featured power box and it's coming in at a very attractive price point. I've learned a lot about this thing over the past few days of using it and uh, there's a lot to like. There's a few little points I want to talk to you about as well though. So if you're interested in purchasing one of these, settle in and uh, let's get started. Okay, so just getting you kicked off with what's in the box. It's just the usual expected stuff, such as a foot to put on the bottom of the device, an Allen key to place it on with, and a manual with some special attention paid to that manual, as I actually think it's quite good. There's a lot of useful information stored inside there. In terms of included cabling, there is a 5.5 by 2.5 power cable, a data cable, a temperature and humidity sensor, a regular temperature sensor, and then three silicone coated power cables. The included foot comes with all the hardware that you would need to attach it and it goes straight onto the device. The power box itself is really nicely finished I would say with all the ports lining up well. As to the ports we have the PC main connection port, a 5.5 by 2.5 power in, one always on 12 volt out which is, these are all 2.1 if you like barrel size and five more switchable as in just on off power outs a regulated 5.5 by 2.1 and two PWM control dew heater outlets along with the temperature and humidity and temperature port. For USB connectivity we have three white tongued USB 2 ports, a USB-C port which also important to note runs at USB 2 speeds along with two with the blue tongs USB 3 which are full speed ports. Now I'm going to be honest with you I was in a bit of a fight with this thing trying to make the most of my uh, previously pretty unneat cabling. Um, in the end I did get there and it does certainly look a lot neater. Really I'm more bothered about functional um, use rather than aesthetics with this because one snag with this EQ8 and it is merciless it will just break cables like it's nothing so it's something you really have to watch out for now I did make a mistake initially as you can see right there the temperature probe is right next to the temperature and humidity sensor and really want that probe tucked under your dew heater against the metal of the tube that's the correct position for it as you see I've changed it right there Alright then guys, so we're a few days on now. I've made some small changes since the uh, the previous kind of time lapse where I was putting everything onto my mount and telescope now. Uh, we're running the uh, 533 mono rig, so that's going to require some extra power. I can test things out there. And um, basically, tonight is my only chance uh, upcoming. The weather forecast has not been good, <laughs> but I wanted to take this opportunity under some actual clear skies to just check things out a little bit for you. And I have encountered a few small problems, which I'm going to talk to you about right now. I'm going to we kick things off with them basically before we get on to the, the rest of stuff. So the gauges are all working, it seems, properly, but the ambient temperature and ambient humidity both read a smidge high, I would say. It's nothing drastic, um, but slightly high. I think they're off by about three degrees or so. I reckon it's about actually about four degrees out there, uh, ambient air temperature, and about 80% ish humidity, maybe just a touch higher than that from my other sensors. That I own now. I can't guarantee that my other sensors are perfectly accurate either, so I don't know. The, the truth is probably somewhere in between them, as it usually would be, as you'd expect. But uh, the other issue that I encountered this is this is like a bigger issue than just a slight temperature uh, mismatch. Um, the PWM1 controls so it's a specific socket for plugging your dew heater into, and the PWM1 in particular is supposed to offer automatic control of your dew heater strap based on the incoming information you see from the ambient temperature and ambient humidity and dew point calculation that comes from those. The problem I was having is that no matter what I put on in here, the uh, you know the, the level of the output, I could not get it to trigger even when the lens temperature was reporting way lower than the dew point. Obviously it's a skyward facing surface so on a clear night it radiates all its heat off and, uh, and cools below ambient temperature. That's you know why you end up with surface frost on things sometimes even when it's not actually you know zero degrees outside. Just that same kind of uh, radiative loss. Now basically what I've had to do to get around this I just could not get it to trigger. I expect it's a software issue and it's something of sort but what I've had to do to get around it is use a 5.5 uh, to 2.1 to RCA control um, like adapter little thing. It's just a short stubby cable with an RCA on one and then 5.5 2.1 on the other and I've plugged it into the 
variable output because I do want some control. It could have just gone into any of the other DC outputs and it just got standard 12 all the time. But I put it on this one, even though I am just asking for 12 right now, basically waiting for things to stabilize and I want to see what's happening on the end of my scope. I think it's about probably about right at 12 volts tonight because uh, it is pretty foggy. It's it's not great. You know, I can see dew going to form on things very, very easily tonight. So it's going to require a fair bit of power to keep the, especially the SCT corrector plate dew free as they are notoriously just magnets for it. But right now, uh, it's good to see that the lens temperature has risen as expected. The power draw has risen as expected, whereas previously I just could not get the PWM1 auto controls to trigger. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Now, I, I am confident that SV Bonnie is going to get this sorted. I really do think it's just going to be a, a software or firmware issue. I went to this website to try to update the firmware, but uh, sadly the firmware updater is in Chinese and I didn't want to trust, you know, like some sort of phone based translation app or something like that in case, uh, you know, in case it was a translation error and I ended up wiping it or something by accident. Um, just not worth the risk because it's working kind of as is uh, to a point where I'm happy to continue just using it anyway and wait for the uh, the incoming updates. I'll, uh, I'll let SB Bonnie know about this problem, of course, uh, but I also want to let you know because I realize this is probably going to be a fairly popular device. The price point they've got this out at is very, very competitive. I think it's, um, I think, unless I'm missing something, the cheapest of the adjustable kind of power boxes out there on the market. So um, the price is right. It just needs those last few kinks ironing out and then... Uh, you know, I'd be more than happy to, to kind of recommend it. Um, I would still recommend it if you're just happy doing as I've said and using the, the variable output yourself to uh, to control if you wished, but, um, you know, and then wait for them to fix it like I'm going to do. Anyhow, that's really all the update I had for you. Everything else about the device is working completely as expected. Um, the full speed ports, the USB 3 ports, they're working perfectly for the stuff that needs that speed, like your camera, just for example. Um, the USB 2 ports are working as expected for everything else. Uh, guide cameras, and you know, you name it, focuses, etc. Everything is neat and I'm, uh, and I'm very low on snag hazards right now, so I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. My cable management might not be the neatest, but it, you know, it's it's safe. <laughs> At least I know that it's safe. And uh, that's some peace of mind really right there. But anyway, uh, that's, I think, about all the update that I can give you at this point. Um, I am, uh, as long as they're going to get that sorted, that PBM auto control, I'm happy to recommend it. So just, I would recommend searching ahead of time if you are thinking about buying one of these, get you know the latest um, information about it and just see where it's at, see if the New updates have came out. I'm assuming that's what it's going to take. For all I know, maybe that Chinese uh, software uh, firmware updater would have probably solved the problem. But I can't tell uh, because I'm not willing to just test that out blindly. I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you, as always, for your support. Really, I do appreciate you guys. And I uh, I hope that you know that I, I do. So uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, whenever that is. And until then, look after yourselves. Look after those around you. And... Uh, much love. I'll see you in the next one. Glitz, guys.